Hey, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Christopher Smallwood, aka Mr. Will to Fashion, and I am back with another video. Um I've been waiting for a minute to put this video out to make a video like this, but we're gonna talk about it. And we're gonna talk about how surgery life was for me. So before we get into this video press that subscribe button and turn on that post notification bell as we are on our way to 1,000 subscribers. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It's 100% free. So just do it. Let's get into it. Okay, here we go. Um, Surgery life for me, I feel like it literally getting better over time. Um, for those of you who don't know, excuse me, I have a condition called cerebral palsy, which affects the muscles in my legs and my movement in my arms or whatever, and fingers and hands. But throughout my life, I had a lot of surgery to fix a lot of the issues I had as a child. Um, my first surgery was at five years old. I think I was five turning six because my sister was, I think she was, oh, I don't know. I don't know. She, I, don't, I don't think she was a year yet. And her and I are five years apart, so I had to be about five, maybe going to turning six. I can't remember, but it was around that age. But that surgery was to stop me from scissoring. And what that mean is, for those of you who don't know what scissoring is, like when we walk, our legs would scissor across each other. And my legs used to really scissor really bad when I would walk in the walker or when somebody used to walk with me. My legs would scissor really badly. And um, I remember <laughs> it used to take my Barney I took my Barney with me when I got that surgery done. I had a Barney stuffed animal with me. And I took Barney with me. And I made them put a cast on. Well, I didn't make them. They put a cast on Barney. So Barney could be like me. So, um. That cast, y'all. I remember that cast was a bitch. Um. That cast was. I would cast from the. From the top of my thigh all the way down to my feet. And I had a bar separating my legs. Yeah, that, that, that was a bitch. That was a complete bitch. I hated that motherfucker. I hated that thing. Like, I had a cast on both legs with the bar to separate my legs. At the bottom of the cast. Y'all. I remember not being able to roll over. I could not roll over. I couldn't get comfortable. I had to sleep on my back for six weeks. I think that that's why now I cannot stand sleeping on my back. I will not sleep on my back because it's so irritating. It's painful as fuck now. I can't do it no more. But that surgery, uh, how was the pain? I can't remember the pain. I really believe that was a uh, that they had me on some good stuff because I don't remember being in a lot of pain with that surgery at all. What I do remember is the itching process. Okay, y'all. Uh, what I know now versus what I know then. Do not stick nothing in your cast to scratch. If you have to scratch, you better just... You better give that cast like a good old ghetto pet. Like a good old ghetto pet because that thing will itch badly, especially for six weeks. But before we get into that, let's just talk about me getting home, the going home process. Um, I had to actually ride in the ambulance. I hope I said it right. Come on, y'all. No come for me. My speech is not the best. I had to ride in the ambulance. 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 I think that's how you say it. I don't give a fuck. Whatever. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. 
I had to write one of those things to get home. Because of how my legs were separated with the bar, I couldn't really do a lot of, you know, maneuvering. So I had to ride that home. I thought that that was the coolest thing ever back then. And um, they took me back to my grandparents' house. That's where I was staying at the time. And I remember, <laughs> you know, just not being able to get any good sleep. Um, I had one of the wheelchairs that legs would raise up. And I had a pillow under my legs to keep me stressed out, elevated. Excuse me, y'all. I had a pillow that was under my legs to keep me elevated. And I was not comfortable at all. I, I couldn't sleep for the first. I'm going to say, this was, this was all of my surgeries. For all my surgeries, I can't sleep at least for the first three, four days. After that, I'm cool. After that, I'm cool. But, it's still hard to figure out, okay, let me turn this way. Let me try to maneuver a little bit. But with that bar between your legs, there was no maneuvering. It was barely hard to sit on the damn toilet. My grandfather had to carry me in the bathroom, place me on the toilet. Hold my legs up while I'm taking the shit, literally. He had to hold up my leg because when we have a cast, you can't just let it sit on the floor. You gotta have something under it. So he was holding it while I'm taking the shit. So I can only imagine how the hell that shit smell. I ain't know that bitch had to stink in there all, the whole time. But, with that being said, first surgery was a success to start the scissoring. Next surgery that I remember was the outer side of my leg. The outer part of both my legs. As well as the back of my legs. Yeah, the outer part of my legs. And the back of my legs. I believe that was the hamstr hamstrings, I believe. Hold on, wait. No, I'm, I'm just say the outer part of my leg and the back of my leg. I, I don't know what the part's called, I can't remember. But I know they had to do something on this, on both sides. On the outer sides of both my legs. And as well as the back of my legs. I don't know what that muscle is, I can't remember. I really don't give a fuck. I just know I had surgery in the back of my leg. On the side and the back of my legs. So with that particular surgery. Um... That case, it, 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 I didn't have a bar, thank God. But, OMG, the recovery process for that was a little bit more intense. I think that that was my first time going to a rehab, a rehabilitation facility. And that's where I kissed my first girl. Well, not my girlfriend, but I kissed a girl for the first time there. I'll talk about that in another video. But, y'all, that recovery process, that was a little bit more intense. Because, it was weird because they kept trying to get me to stand with two, two casts on both my legs. Which meaning... I couldn't bend my legs at all. So it's like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I did not have one to carry. So I'm sorry. I had on Nemon blasters for that surgery. I had on Nemon blasters for that particular surgery. And y'all, when I tell you, ooh, Jesus, I'd rather be in a cast than Nemo blasters. Because with Nemoblazers, you pretty much have to support your own weight. You have to pretty much bear weight on your legs. So as they're telling me to stand, oh my god, I'm feeling like I'm popping stitches, staples, everything I had in my legs, I felt like I was popping them bitches. I felt like I was dying, y'all. Like, I felt like I was literally dying. I know it may seem like I mean I'm exaggerating, but 
It was painful. I'm going to just say that. It was painful as fuck. It was painful, but after a while, I was able to adjust to it. And with the help of rehab, thank you to Hospital for Sick Children. That's where I was at the time. But with the help of extensive physical therapy, I was able to build a lot more mobility. I was able to adjust to it. I was able to get better and get better and get better. And that's what the Nemo is on. But this is with any surgery that you have. Y'all, let me tell you. Whether you getting your cast taken off, your Nemo blasters, whatever is keeping your leg in neutral position, you're going to be in pain when you first start exercising. It's going to be a lot of tears. You're going to cry a lot of tears. I'm not going to even fake. I cried a lot. I cried a lot at the beginning of my physical therapy because I just wanted to give up on everything. I wanted to give up on life a couple of times because that's how bad that pain is. Nobody can take that away from any of us. Any of us that have cerebral palsy, any of us that have any physical disability that requires surgery, nobody can take away that pain that we experience. Nobody. So yeah, that was really painful. Um, the ex the first time you start physical therapy, that's painful as fuck. You're going to cry, you're going to shed some tears, but just know it gets better after some time. If you have, if you are getting surgery in the future, make sure, like, if you have your physical therapy schedule set up, ask your nurse. Or even if you're at home going to physical therapy, take your medicine 30 to 40 minutes before you go to physical therapy. That way you can uh, relieve a lot of the pain to avoid a lot of them situations. But we got through that surgery. Fine. That surgery's done. Let's talk about the next one. Okay. The next surgery I had was my knee, and that was because I fractured my knee, my right knee actually. And now, not understanding that when they went into my knee, they wanted to bring my kneecap, cause my kneecap was sitting up top, they wanted to bring it down. I'm thinking, okay, this will be a simple surgery. They're going to just bring the bitch down and lock it in place. No, it's a lot more than that. You have to bring your kneecap down and they can put, like, a little wire to hold your kneecap together. And they tell you ahead of time, your wire will eventually pop. It's going to be painful, so just expect it. Know what's going to happen. Don't worry. So, um, with that surgery, I also had on... Nemo blasters. I think only two of my surgeries I had on the cast, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. This particular knee was also was not only fractured, but the kneecap was elevated above where above the pocket they were supposed to fit in. So I had to go through that surgery, and that surgery, y'all, uh, I don't care what nobody say. Anything that deals with the knees, that's the surgery that I mainly regret with that one, with my knee surgery. Because before I had my knee surgery, I was still able to sit on my knees. I was able to at least get on my knees to get into the stand, get into a transferring. If I'm on the floor, I can get on my knees, pull myself up. After the knee surgery, that bitch is dead. You cannot do nothing after a knee surgery. You can't. A lot of people that have cerebral palsy, we cannot use our knees anymore because of surgery. Especially when you get a knee surgery like that, you, they only allow you to bend your knee a certain amount before you be like, oh no, this, this shit hurt. We're not doing this no more. But... Y'all, that, 
that was some crazy pain. That was, I think, one of the worst surgeries I had. Both of my knees was bad, but... Yeah, that was a, some crazy pain. Um, I had to go through rehab with that one, too. I think I was maybe about 15, 16. I was, still in, I was still in high school when I got that one done. And, um... Hmm, I was out of school for six weeks. Went to the hospital for six hours. Right? Thanked them again. I had extensive therapy. Monday through Saturday. Sunday was my only day off. And, um... Once again, the physical therapy... And with this experience was way more intense, way more painful, and just um like I said before, make sure you ask for pain medicine before you you go to physical therapy. Once you get your schedule, um yeah, that's how that one went. Um. Then a couple years after that, when I was 18, I had to get the left knee done. Great, another fucking surgery. So now I'm counting one, two, three, four surgeries. I'm on my fourth surgery at this point. Cool. By number four, y'all, I was completely over everything. But they felt the knee because I was having more knee problems. I started developing knee problems on my left side. My left knee was starting to ache and mess up. So they wanted to check. They did x-rays to find out the knee was out of pocket. It was sitting on the top of my knee again. So they pulled that knee down, put the rod across my knee. And... um. Yeah, I had to go through the same process with that. I had to go into rehab. But it was not um, a hospital for sick children. And it was National Rehabilitation Center then. Um, it was cool. Like, it, it was cool for a little bit. I dealt with it. It was the same as the first knee surgery. But the pain wasn't as as intense. It wasn't as intense as the first one because the first one was actually fractured. It had to be reconstructed and, and put back in place. But it was not as intense as the right knee. But painful it still was. But I had to wear a cast with that knee though. They wanted that knee to be straight, completely straight for six weeks. So I had to wear a cast with that one. And the cast wasn't really that bad for me. It wasn't. Cause for some reason, my right knee is stronger than my, my right leg is stronger than my left, so I was able to use that when they wanted me to stand up for physical therapy. I ended up getting quite good with it. Then they had me walking in a walker. I was doing that okay. I figured out ways to, to transfer myself, especially in rehab. So that was fine. The rehabilitation process was fine. Um, they ended up taking me out of my cast at six weeks. And I, hold on, I stayed there seven weeks for the surgery. Because they wanted to see how much mobility I had before they were able to send me home. And we worked on it for a good week straight. By the time I got discharged, I was able to bend my knee, move around. Still tender, but I was still able to move a lot better than what I could before. So, that was fine. Um... I'm going to tell you guys this. After you get these knee surgeries, you're going to always, 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 always have little aches and pains here and there. You're going to, sometimes you're going to be really stiff in your knees. Because from us being disabled, our knees are bent most of the time. So you're going to have a lot of pain. But it's going to be okay. It's going to get better over time. I do have aches and pains here and there, but it's not like an everyday thing. I can deal with some days. Some days I just want to lay in the bed and say, fuck it. But it gets better. It gets better. No worries. But 
Listen up. When they tell you to go home and work out, go home and work out. And that's what I messed up at. I didn't want to work out when I went home. Cause the, the pain, I was, uh, how can I put this? I wanted to avoid as much pain as possible. But what we have to understand that the, the pain we go through gets better. The more you do it, it gets easier. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to experience any pain. Me and my father would argue about this a long time ago. Because I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to do anything. And um, I regret doing that. Because I know that his intentions was good. It was good. It may not have been delivered the best way. But it was always with good intentions. And I thank him for that. But, here we go. The, the next surgery. Um, was, ooh, was six years ago. And that's when I started developing more issues with my knee. Um, somehow the the right knee has you know resurfaced above this pocket again so that doctor wanted to do surgery on it and this particular surgery was going to be an in and out surgery but he prepared me for surgery this surgery was a complete bitch I'm not giving a cap he wanted to do a um, a pain block, uh, a pain, what's that shit called? The pain pump, they wanted to insert it in my leg. Yeah, they wanted to insert the thing in my leg while I was awake. So you already know you're nervous when you go get surgery. You're nervous up until, I, well, I don't usually get nervous, but this particular day I was nervous. Because when he said that he had to put the pump in my leg while I was awake, that's when I kind of was nervous because I had to feel the pain. And y'all want to tell you that they trying to put the pain blocker in my thigh. And I'm sitting there crying. I'm literally in tears because that thing hurts like a mother. It hurts y'all. It's not nothing to play with. It hurts really badly. So if you're a grown man and you go in there and shed a couple of tears, I don't blame you. It's okay. You shed a couple of tears. Cool. Shed them tears. It's whatever. But yeah, y'all. I was in a lot of pain. And then... I get put to sleep, and then I'm woken up maybe like an hour later, because I went into surgery um, early that morning, and I remember being woken up and maybe an hour to two hours later, telling me that the surgery was incomplete, and I'm like, huh? Like, you know, like, you waking up for anesthesia, you high as a motherfucker, you don't understand what's going on. I'm like, huh? Like, what are you talking about? Uh, the doctor found out that you didn't have no cartilage. Send me home. Stitches started to burn over the, over the course of a couple of days. My knee was turning purple, swelling out the a-hole. So I told my aunt who I was living with at the time, my knee is swollen, my knee is burning, I can't take it, I need to go to the hospital. And I developed an infection. I developed an infection after that surgery. After that incomplete surgery. So I went to GW Hospital, George Washington University Hospital. Thank you for them. Cause they end up finding out about the infection. And y'all, that's a painful process. Because as they are examining my knee freshly out of surgery from two days, they're poking, prying, doing whatever. So as they're trying to examine my knee, they're also um, sticking needles in my knee to try to drain it. But they're realizing they couldn't get to where it was at. So... Y'all, I'm damn near in tears at that point. Because they're telling me that 
it's yellow stuff coming out of my stitches. So they are trying to remove the stitches with me awake. And that's when I kind of said, you know what? Can y'all please put me to sleep and do this? Because I can't take it. I'm already in pain. I can't deal with it. Can we just put me to sleep? Okay, so that's it. Okay, let's go talk to the orthopedic surgeons. Orthopedic surgeons came in and examined me, realized that it was a little bit worse than what they thought it was. So, um, I was admitted that following day, that following morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, maybe 8, I can't remember. I remember my father talking to me before I get, go into surgery. And he was like, um, I'm, I'll be there by the time you woke up. And he was there when I woke up. My father was there every time I woke up from surgery. There had not been a surgery that I had, except for one that he hadn't been at. But he made sure that he was, he made sure that he came later on though. But this particular surgery, y'all, um, this could have been life changing. This could have took me out because when um, I woke up from surgery, I was told I had to stay on antibiotics in the hospital for five days to a week to make sure that everything clears up. And they told me I ended up having not one infection, but two different infections in my knee. And yeah, I was on two different types of antibiotics, as well as pain, as well as a med as well as a different medicine bag for pain. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, why am I going through this? Like, am I being punished? And yeah, I literally looked up and I was like, please just take me now. Because I live this life that nobody can understand. Like, people try to to tell me about my disability, but nobody has ever had a clue of what I really went through. And yeah, the pain that I experienced, y'all, was not fun. Especially with that one, because I felt like. What if I would have ignored that in the in the, in the and just kept taking pain medicine and the um infection with it went to my lungs? I could have literally died. I could have literally been gone. And that just scares me because oh god. I have so much stuff I want to do that I'm just not ready to go yet. Especially with where I'm, things are now in this world. I have a lot of things I want to do. Um, life is, you know, changing for me, so you know, I feel like God really pulled through for me during this trying time of the infection and then also having to go to rehab again after that. Dealing with personal things at where I was living at. So it's like I had to, I had to, you know, I had to just deal with it. And that's what I did. I dealt with it. I stayed in the hospital for that week. Um, I went to rehab for another five days, so I was gone from home a good 14 days. So I'm stressed about that. Um, just, it was just a lot that I was stressed about. And recovery process for that, it wasn't really a recovery because all they did was, um, Remove the patella. They had well. I'm sorry, y'all. The the next day after when I had the infection, they ended up having to remove the kneecap. 
they've removed the kneecap and um, they wanted to try to see what they can do that to fix that hold on wait 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 I don't get any surgery Smith that okay they took out the infection and made me heal when the rehab okay y'all sorry sorry y'all the surgery of the infection I was kept there for five days then I had to then I went home then a couple weeks, a few weeks later, had to get surgery again to get the patella removed. Recovery process for that was easy for me. I wasn't really in pain with that surgery. Um, I was able to come home recover very well and that was that oh I'm sorry y'all the reason why I had to get my patella removed was because of the infection and there was no cartilage as well I believe that if I if I didn't have the infection I, I would have been eligible at the time to get a knee replacement but when you have an infection they don't want to put nothing extra in your body so that's what that was so they had to remove the patella and that pain wasn't really much pain for me they had some me on good medication I didn't feel nothing really Okay, cool. That was that. That that was that surgery. Last surgery, last and most recent surgery was on this. Was on my wrist. My surgery, my wrist used to be contracted like this. They brought it up. They put a metal rod from the palm of my hand down here, and they put another rod from the back of my hand down here. I can't rotate this hand, y'all. I'm sorry, maybe a little bit. Hope y'all might not can see because of the lighting. But there's a scar from here down to here. And here there's a scar from here down to down to here. So that surgery was painful too. Because you got two metal rods and you got staples in your hand. And you got 